from chapter 19, diseases of the immune system, there is one large topic that I would like to cover with you this semester. Chapter 19 covers different types of diseases that affect the immune system. So these are going to be diseases that involve all the different immune system cells like T cells and B cells as well as antibodies. Those, those different cells that we discussed in the last few chapters. One thing we are not going to cover in detail in this chapter is um, specific autoimmune diseases. These very often are going to be covered in an anatomy and physiology class instead of in microbiology because they are not specifically caused by a microbe. Now, the diseases we are going to discuss from the immune system are really um, more defined as allergic reactions. Now these are not going to be reactions to microbes, but more reactions where our body is overreacting to something that is not necessarily harmful. So when we think of allergic reactions, it's best defined as an immune system response to an antigen that we call an allergen. Remember, an antigen is something that elicits an immune response. With an allergic reaction, someone is going to suffer from some signs and symptoms that are caused by, for the most part, harmless things. And an example of an allergic reaction of this nature would be something like an allergic reaction to peanuts. Most people can be around peanuts, can ingest peanuts, and have absolutely no negative reaction. But there are some who can have such a strong reaction to a peanut that it can lead to death. So these allergic reactions are definitely worth discussing in this capacity. When you consider an allergic reaction, the most common signs and symptoms are things like fever, hives, and itching. When an allergic reaction can become more dangerous is when we get into the area of anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a rapidly developing reaction that can lead to very rapid drops in blood pressure, throat swelling and ultimately blocking off of airways can be can become very severe very quickly. When we think of allergic reactions we can separate those into four different types of hypersensitivity. So this table here kind of outlines some of the important things you need to remember. What you need to study from this chapter is how to characterize the four different types of hypersensitivities. So let's go through each one together. First we have type 1 hypersensitivity. This is what we typically refer to as an allergy. So you may hear someone say that they're allergic to pollen. Well, what does pollen actually do to them? Pollen may just make them, if they are exposed, begin to sneeze, maybe their eyes water, and then as soon as that's finished, that's over, they're good to go again. That would be a type 1 hypersensitivity. Um, with the type 1, whenever the person is exposed to an allergen, something like the pollen, which we use for example, that pollen is going to bind to an IgE, a type of antibody found on a mast cell. The mast cell is then going to undergo degranulation. With degranulation, the contents or the inside of the mast cell are going to be released. Shown here in this table are the granule components that are released from the mast cell. So someone that is exposed may get a release of heparin histamine, serotonin. Well, what's that going to cause? You may end up with things like um, bronchial constriction where the, um, that's the portions of the respiratory system are going to close off, making it a little harder to breathe. Uh, runny nose uh, is where the mucus secretion comes in, watery eyes because histamine causes you to tear up. So lots of the more characteristic allergy symptoms we would see. Now on the next slide, we see kind of in a more picture style explanation of what's going on. So here we see we're first exposed to the antigen. When we're exposed to the antigen, the antigen is presented. 
that's going to activate B cells. Okay. Once the B cell is activated, that B cell is going to produce antibodies against this original allergen. Now, this original allergen may have been like a pollen. So our body has now overreacted and produced antibodies against the pollen. So then the next time we come in contact with this allergen, this pollen, we're going to have mast cells expressing the IgE antibodies against the pollen. That's going to cause this mast cell to release all of the little granules inside that can lead to an inflammatory response. To further classify these type 1 hypersensitivities, this table kind of shows you how you're exposed to different types of allergens and the common name that we can see resulting. So if we inhale allergens, we may get um, an allergy-induced asthma. Once the allergen is inside of the bloodstream, we can get an anaphylaxis. I know you've all heard this term here, hay fever, especially if you live in the South. Hay fever is where we inhale something like pollen, end up with the runny nose, watery eyes, sneezing, things of that nature. So that's a type 1 hypersensitivity, kind of the generic allergy. So let's move on to type 2 hypersensitivities. With type 2, instead of the IgE and the mast cell being involved, we see IgGs and IgMs that are responding to something that is um, a cell surface antigen. So remember with type 1, we were responding to something like pollen, something we just inhaled. With type 2, this is the body reacting to um, like a self antigen, an antigen that's expressed on one of the cells. The most common reaction we see with these type 2 hypersensitivities is a transfusion reaction. Okay. So from this table here, you can see the different blood types. So if we are blood type A, that means our red blood cells have type A antigen. If we have type A antigen, we can't have antibodies against A or we'll break down our own blood. What we would have would be antibodies against, type, against B. And so I encourage you to really check out this table and make sure you can understand what's going on. So if we think about a transfusion reaction, let's take this question. Can a type B individual receive type A blood? Okay. So if the recipient here is type B, that means they're going to have antibodies against A, not B. So if this type B person received type A blood, then the antibodies are going to attack that infused type A blood and break it down. So the answer is... No, if you're type B, you can't have type A blood. It can get a little bit more detailed than that. We also have something called the RH factor that serves as an antigen on our red blood cells. Individuals that are RH positive have RH antigens, so no RH antibodies. Individuals that are RH negative don't have RH antigens, so they do have RH antibodies. So let's take this scenario shown in the picture here. So you've got mom. Mom is RH negative. So she's RH negative. She's got antibodies against RH. Well, if dad happens to be RH positive and baby ends up being RH positive, mom's antibodies will actually begin to attack the fetus. So this is actually a really serious type 2 hypersensitivity that has to be tested for whenever a woman becomes pregnant if the woman is a um, negative RH factor. Then just to finish off the chapter with type 3 hypersensitivities, this is going to be a um, reaction where you have an immune complex that is depositing throughout the body. So you get large accumulations of antigen and antibody. You see lots of side effects. The only way to treat these type 3 hypersensitivities is through anti-inflammatory um, steroid treatments. So much more serious reactions, much more serious treatments. 
The last type of hypersensitivity I'm sure many of you are familiar with is type 4. Type 4 is not mediated by antibodies, and it's going to most commonly show up as a contact dermatitis. A great example of type 4 is the reaction we see to poison ivy. So when someone comes in contact with poison ivy, that poison ivy is then going to activate these dendritic cells in the skin. Well, within the skin, right in this one localized area, we get an inflammatory reaction, and you see the response is this dermatitis, this itchy, inflamed area. So as you're studying through this particular chapter 19, I really want you to pay close attention to this table and make sure you can classify the different types of hypersensitivities.